Well, hooray, out for my first fishing trip of the new season. I'm pretty damn happy to be out, I'll tell you that. Not fished since March. And I'm out today on the lake that you would have seen on my previous videos where I fished on Leisure for Tench and on Float and Centipede. I am out today, once again, targeting Tench. I'm very, very, very happy to be out, as I say. Going to be leisuring this time round. Two rods out on Leisure, one on a low resistance Leisure setup, and the other rod out on just a simple black cat maggot feeder with a helicopter rig. Now I'll go through those rigs later on and during the course of the fishing trip. But as you can see behind me, the lake is covered with all that typical fluffy pollen that you get, which tends to mess with an angler's line and gets all stuck in your eyes and your reel. But it looks absolutely sumptuous and absolutely spot on. And although it can be a moody water, I've got my fingers, got my toes crossed, and if I could cross my ears, I'd cross them too, for a tench or two, that would be lovely. Now, what I'm going to be using today is maggots in the feeder with uh, maggots on the hook. Just simple, straightforward helicopter rig, and I'm also going to be using lob worms, red worms, and a very sensible mixture, not too heavy, just a steady mixture of bird seed, liquidised Vitalin dog food, so it's mixed in and run through a food processor just to make it finer. A little bit of brown in that, a little bit of liquidised bread too. Molasses mixed in to give a good sweetener. Small amount of corn, mixture of dead and live maggots, as I kept some over in the freezer from my last trip of the cool season, so got that to mix in as well, which I'll be doing in a minute. And a small amount of corn, not too much. In with that as well, as you know I like to use it, nice bit of particle, good helping of bird seed, and that's the Hafe's Red Band Pigeon Conditioner. Anyway, that's about the sum of it. As I say, I will go through the rigs with you chaps throughout the fishing trip and I tell you what, I'm just so, 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 I'm like a child at Christmas or Christmas Eve even. Can't wait to get the rod set up and wet a line. I'm going to have a little lead about first just to see if how the weed is. It doesn't look too bad though. Um, if it was a bit weedier, I have brought the weed rake with me and I can give it a quick rake in. But anyway, looking forward to getting set up to be honest. So. Without further ado, I'll catch you guys in a bit and get my gear set up. Right, I'm just going to go through with you what I'm using today on one of the rods and one of the rigs, and that is a black cat feeder, like so. You will see these, they're very popular feeders, Camazon black cat feeder, and just rigged up as a helicopter rig. Nice and simple. So, just at the end, the main line, that's a um, 10 pound main line, got a 1.7 ounce Camazon black cat feeder and that's just set and tied at the bottom of the main line. Then up from there, a couple of little rig stops there and just coming off there in between the two rig stops, nice little bit of anti-tangle tubing covering on the swivel like so, so it kicks it away out from where the feeder is. As I say, two soft rig stops and then Round about three and a half inches, and this is Preston Innovations uh, Riflo power line. This is seven pound breaking strain. Uh, this is around about three and a half to four inches in length, this hook link, but I would say, ideally, you do really want to be getting it down, if you can, to around about two inches, two and a half inches. Uh, so it's usually a lot better, but quite fiddly to tie when it's at such a short length. As I say, that's seven pound Preston Innovations power line. It's a very basic, helicopter rig, as I say 1.7 ounce Camazon black cap feeder, a couple of rig stops there, swivel coming off the side with a nice bit of anti-tangle tubing, 7 pound Preston Innovations power line and that's a size 10, which you probably can't see that well, it's a size 10 Palatrax of the hook, nice and tacky, nice and sharp. That's what I'm going to be using today on one of my rods and I'm going to be starting off using either a maggot and worm cocktail or just maggots and a few maggots in the feeder. Now obviously you can if you would so wish to slow the maggots from leaking out the feeder you can do what most people do and that is just tape a few of the holes up with a little bit of duct tape or masking tape, um, waterproof tape even, and it just slows the maggots trickling out the feeder. Now, I'm not going to be doing that at the moment because I'm, what I'm going to be doing is going to be using a mixture of live and dead maggots so the live maggots help to push out the less lively ones. I'm not really one to waste my bait so it's getting used whatever and on top of that although the bottom of this particular pit is quite gravelly there is pockets of silt and having a few dead maggots as well either going in with the feeder or just loose fed 
with the balls of ground bait just means that they can't wriggle off and disappear into any silt as well but I'm going to be using both live and dead maggots so anyway that's that particular rig I'll go and take you through my other one right then just take you through my second rod it's just got a quick change low resistance run ring one and a half ounce bottle lead that's a nice lead that doesn't roll about too much on the bottom not too heavy so that it doesn't settle too hard and up the um, end just above that got a nice little HLS protector bead very similar to the um, Enterprise tackle protector beads but a lot lot cheaper that's HLS I'm not sponsored by them I'm just telling you guys because you know it's cheap it's, it's cheerful and it's cheaper than the Enterprise tackle protector bead sleeving and then just from there as you can see little anti-tangle tubing kicker to kick the hook link away and once again seven pound pressing innovations power line a bit longer hook link on this around about 10 to 12 inches and another power tracks the hook size 10 so a nice simple setup and obviously being a quick change low resistance run ring you can change that lead out if I want to switch to a low resistance uh, feeder setup or a lighter leisure way I could do and also because it's got such a large ring to it very low resistance the fish isn't going to feel much when it comes to picking that up if anything at all and that's basically it so that's both the rods both the rigs nothing out of this world just keeping it simple and sensible and hopefully pick me up a tench or maybe a couple of tench I'm not being too greedy Just going to go through with you my ground bait mixture. As you can see there, it's dampened down. That is liquidised Vitaline Original dog feed, dog food. That's like a muesli breakfast kind of cereal um, component that you might mix with your dog's wet food, and that's a great component to mix in. But I do liquidise it for um, some of my fishing trips because it gives a finer build and a lot nicer build for balling up into a ground bait. Now in that mixture, I've also got bran, which is giving it its brown colour and um, variation in colour mixed up with the yellow of the Vitaloo. In with it I've got live maggots, dead maggots, good helping of bird seed, nice bit of particle for the tench to get mooching about in and a light helping of corn. So tench just a bit further out there just rolled so got my fingers crossed but literally with this mixture you can 
ball it up and you can shoot it out when you get the right consistency easy enough to fire out with a strong catapult at 70 to 80 meters I'm not joking it literally is superb for balling up at range but I'm going to be just under arming today so I'm going to be just using a slightly moister mix as you can see if I break that open for you you can see that's rather nice inside plenty of attractant there with the molasses the bird seed the maggots and of course sweet corn and that's it really that's my ground bait so hopefully the um, tent should pick up on the scent trail and we might pick one or two up Yes. Well, there we go, a lovely six pound eight ounce tench. Beautiful condition. Has still had quite a bit of lice on it, so whether it was laying up, I don't know, but it's a beautiful condition. Lovely scrap, taking on that low resistance leisure setup, which I use for my barbel fishing, and a single lobworm. Just draw myself back. Look at that. Isn't that a peach? Absolute perler. And it's got some quite distinct markings on it, so if I ever caught it again, I would know. I'll show you. I'll show it to. You, it's other flank before I slip it back. There you go. Got some real coy kind of black tar or oil marking, kind of black blemishes on its side. But yeah, really happy with this. Absolutely made up. You know, if this is the only trip, only fish of my first trip um, out tench fishing, of this particular trip anyway, I'm absolutely happy as Larry as you can tell. Lovely. Look at that, it's lovely. Very benevolent and almost apologetic and kind, forgiving teddy bear eyes. Absolutely wonderful. A lovely olive green species that no angler could help but adore. Anyway, let's get this beauty slip back, shall we? Wonderful. Well, no more bites since I had that 6-8 tench. I saw one fish which just rolled along the margin further along the where this tree snag is. But apart from that, and a very, very heavy helping of catkin fur, or fluff, pollen, um, which as you know guys, is absolutely annoying. It's always a pain in the neck when you're winding in to have to squeeze it off, pick it off your line so you can cast back and get a decent cast without your line and eyes being clipped by the catkin fluff and dander. And it looks like, to all purposes and intents, that the actual lake has a dusting of icing sugar or coconut powder. Now, it's been absolutely gorgeous today. It's been probably a bit too nice, maybe. I, I'm absolutely roasted. But I tell you what, I've absolutely, absolutely enjoyed the trip. It's 
been nice to get out for my first trip since the river's closed, my first tench trip as well, and to pick up a tench on this trip. So, granted it's not been abundant with fish, but it's a moody water, sometimes it can be really be on or it can just be completely off. So, that's the kind of waters that I do like to fish though. I do really enjoy fishing these kind of waters. Granted, they can be tricky, they can be moody, but at the same time, you know, you get some good fish and you get some peace and quiet, which you wouldn't necessarily get on other waters. And I can understand people wishing to fish waters where they might get more action. You know, everyone's got their kind of favourite thing that they like to do and what they enjoy more than others. Some people like to fish waters which are guaranteed to get more fish, more bites. Other people like the solitude and maybe the challenge. But that's what's great with our, you know, our hobby and pastime. You get all these different areas, all the different personalities and all the different components. One person likes to do one thing, someone else doesn't. And that person then speaks to them and says, well, why don't you come and try this? And they share their ideas and adapt and evolve. And if we all did that more often and helped each other, not just in angling, but worldwide, um, I think the world would be a lot better place, a heck of a lot better place. But I'm kind of wittering on and, and rambling away, which I tend to do sometimes. It's just been enjoyable, and I hope you guys have enjoyed the footage, as I say, albeit not with an abundance of fish, but that's fishing, you know. That's why it's called fishing and not catching. And sometimes you have trips like this where you might catch one, other trips where you catch no fish, and then you have your special times where you have a real red letter day where either the fish are on or you're fishing very well, or both. That's what's so enjoyable about it. All those contrasting trips, the highs, the middling bits, and sometimes the lows where you might not be feeling that you're fishing that well, you might not be feeling that you've got the same kind of buzz or urgency and spirit about your fishing. Anyway, I'm going to give it another hour, hour and a half, see if the fish do come on like a nip one more tench. That'd be nice to pick just one more up. They do tend to move on and move into the area and feed and pick up with their feeding in general from evening time. Just typical tench really, early morning and evenings. But we shall see. If we don't, we don't. It's been thoroughly enjoyable regardless. Well, I'm all packed up. I gave it an extra hour, but nothing doing. Not on this occasion. Just that one male tench earlier on, but you know, I'm happy with that. Absolutely made up. First tench trip, as I say, and first fishing trip since the closed season. So I'll definitely be getting back down and probably trying a few other swims as well. But I also want to give this swim another go and see if I can winkle out a few more tench. I was just so happy and so made up to have had that fish. Um, it's just wonderful. Very, very enjoyable. I know it's not been the most fish filled video that you guys are ever going to see but you know that's fishing, that's the way it goes and you have your tougher trips and, hard, and harder trips and your easier trips and your kind of middle ground trips and this is a moody venue but I like my moody venues, um, just enjoy them, on top of that they are nice and peaceful as well plus the chance of a decent fish or two if you work at it. But anyway I hope you have enjoyed the video. And if you have enjoyed it, do take time to give it a like and click the thumbs up button. That would be very, very much appreciated. And I know I say that a lot of the time on my videos, but I really mean it, guys. You know, giving it a thumbs up, showing that you've enjoyed the video and taking time for you to um, place a comment and interact with me. I, I really do enjoy that, and I sincerely mean that. It's great to have the interaction. And it's a nice kind of community feeling on a whole with YouTube and the angling side with all you chaps and um, any of you ladies out there. I think it's mainly guys, isn't it? Let's be honest. But um, <laughs> I do um, hope you have enjoyed the video. And as I say, if you have, please do take time to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to me, take time to click that subscribe button and you'll be kept up to date with all my videos. Plus there's a reasonable back catalogue of older videos to go through in the meantime. 
anyway that's it. it is, I'm absolutely sweltering and my battery's going to run out any minute now so I'm going to take my gear and head off home till my next video guys tight lines and take care bye bye